Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of All, and in this video we're going to have a look at making a brazier with a Chaos Star type iconography on the top. Because this video contains a range of skills, some of which you might already know, I've put the different sections of the video into chapters so you can go to the area that's relevant to you and your needs. Do let me know if you like this format in the comments or if you'd rather have smaller videos that just covered one skill individually. So this project is part of a basing set that I'm making. This is mostly for personal use. I'd probably throw them online on CG Trader at some point. But the idea is to have a loyalist imperial temple that at some point has been taken over by the forces of chaos and converted to their dark ends. So I wanted to add something that shows this change in ownership. So I thought having these braziers bolted onto the Imperial marble architecture would look quite good. And this is for some bases for some Adeptus Custodes who are retaking this location. So I'm gonna start from the bottom up on this and we're gonna use a variety of different shapes to make this look interesting. So I'm gonna start by just bringing in a cone. So we've got this cone here and I think to go with this shape and the typical eight pointed star, we want to change those vertices to eight. And I wanna make this a bit larger. So this is gonna be three units, which will be millimeters in diameter. And then we're gonna to need to make the depth a bit longer to make that look about right. And I'm just gonna scroll that until it looks about the right size. So somewhere around there. So I'm just gonna round that to 5.5 and keep that there. Let's maybe have a look at six. Yeah, six looks better. Then I'm gonna change the rotation. I'm gonna do that in the X axis. I'm just gonna do that here. 180 degrees around. Obviously, I could do that by rotating it using the R shortcut. Speaking of which, my screencast keys are off. I'll just put those on. We've got the scale set as one, so we don't need to change that. But I am going to control and B to bevel that edge with a single bevel. So a chamfer, just to make that look a little bit more interesting where it's going to transition into the rest of the brazier. So G and Z, let's move that down. And let's make the transition that where it's going to go into the longer part of the brazier. I keep having to be very careful not to say brazier here. I don't know why that is stuck in my head. So I'm going to go three wide for that as well. Let's up the vertices to about 128 to make that nice and smooth. I'm going to give that a more rounded transition. So I'm going to go into face mode. Let's go into the Z axis and control and Z to see this in X-ray mode so we can get this right. And I, let's put that to about there. Select that and E to extrude that down. And then to round this off, Alt, oops, no, it needs to be in edge mode. Alt, select the edge and control and B to bevel. And I'm gonna use my middle mouse wheel scrolling up to make that nice and smooth. So that's looking pretty good for the bottom here. So I want to make this twisted section to look quite interesting. Now, usefully I've already made one of those. So I'm actually just gonna bring that in using the asset browser option. So going up to here, asset browser, and then I've got these in my user library and I've got this four part cable that I've used previously. And I'm just gonna drag that in somewhere there. Now, if you haven't seen the video on asset browser, feel free to go and have a look at that. I've put a link to that in the description. And in the same description, you've got how I made this, which is something I normally use for making multi-part cables. So this will be extended along to make a four-part cable. And I've got that on my video and cable rater, but essentially it is just four cylinders that have been booleaned together into one mesh. So let's get that nice and centered. So I'm gonna shift an S and I want to do selection to cursor. For some reason, my normal pie menu isn't there. I'll have to fix that later. And then G and Z and let's S to scale that up a bit somewhere around there and bring that down. Now for this, I actually need the faces here, which I normally don't for my cable. So I'm gonna go into edge mode. Alt click that to select all of the edges around the outside. Press F to fill that. And then I'm gonna do the same at the bottom. So Alt click F to fill. And then I'm gonna go into face mode, select that top face, forward slash to come out of isolated view. And I'm just going to press G and Z to bring that up to something that looks appropriate. Let's say somewhere around there. I can always change that later. And then we're going to make this twisted effect. So I need to go into edge mode, control R, bring in a load of edge loops. And the more edge loops I bring in, the smoother this is going to look. So I'm going to bring in quite a lot. So I've got a hundred there. Left click, to select that that's what I want and then escape. So they're nice and centered and then back into object mode. So let's add this twist in. So I'm gonna go into the modifier panel, add modifier, and I want a simple deform, which is gonna make a bit of a mess of this to begin with, because it's trying to do it on the X axis. We want this on the Z axis. So 
essentially using that Z axis as the point to spin round. And the moment it's only on 45, let's up that a bit. Somewhere around there, 360, that looks pretty good. And let's just check, yep, that is slightly into that bottom bit so it will mesh together nicely. So that looks pretty cool. Now obviously we could do this with something different. For example, if I just control an A, mesh and bring in a cylinder, I could carry on this idea of having eight sides. So make that eight wide. G and X, bring that to the side. S and Z to scale it on the Z axis. We'll move it up slightly. Let's make that slightly smaller. And once again, I could just use that same modifier. So add modifier, simple to form, change that to the Z axis. And let's do that like 360 as well. But you'll notice that's not going to work because we haven't got the edge loops in. So control and R, bring that up. Again, I'm going to do that to around 100. Click and then escape. And then as soon as I go back into object mode, we've got this nice twist. Now for this, that might look a little bit too extreme. Let's try bringing that down to 270. Yeah, I think that looks better. So we can do this in a couple of different ways. It's entirely up to you. I think that this is going to be more obvious when 3D printed. So it's going to look a little bit clearer. But depending on how big you did it, this would look really nice as well. Just going to keep that off to the side and I'll worry about that later. So next we need to make the top bit of the brazier. And this is the bit where I see people make most mistakes on this. Whenever I see people try to do it. And to be fair, you can do this how you want in the long run. It's not for me to say what's the right and wrong way to do it. But this way is probably the more efficient. And to me, efficiency saves time and that's important. So I'm going to bring another out to 128 again. G and Z to bring that up on the Z axis. And I'm going to make that a little bit larger because it needs to contain all the fuel and flaming elements. G and Z that a little bit higher. So what I need to do now is make sure I've applied the scale. So control and A, apply the scale. So it's gone back to one. So my bevel is going to look more uniform. Go into edge mode, select just that edge with Alt, control and B, and let's make that a decent amount of edges. So it's nice and smooth. Let's have a look at that. That should do about all right. I'm going to select face mode, extrude that, and move that down. I've got the bottom of that part of the brazier. Yeah, that should look pretty good. Now I want to make this more extended, so it's got the right height. Back into face mode. Let's have a look at this. G and Z, and let's put that something like there. Not being too exact with this, I might change that later. And then staying in face mode, we're going to go to top view, I to inset that somewhere around there. I'm going to go to about 0 0.8. So I'm typing this in 0.8 of a millimeter should be fine for printing. You could always make it thicker. Later on, I'm probably going to add some fire in this. So that should be perfectly solid enough. And then I'm going to go into side view to make sure I'm not going too far down. Control Z so I can see it in x-ray mode and E and extrude that down and go to somewhere about there out of x-ray mode and then I'm just going to control and B those edges there so that it's beveled on the inside as well. Let's have a look at that from this way. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe G and Z to bring it down a little bit more. So I've got this and we want to make our, and we want to make our interesting shape for our brazier. Now we could just leave it like this. There's no problem with that. In fact, I've realized I just don't like that. I want this a little bit more flared out at the top. So, so I'm going to come into edge mode. Select that edge there, delete and delete the vertices there. Then I can go into face mode, select that face, L for all the linked ones and delete those vertices as well. And uh, let's make this a little bit better. So edge mode, I'm gonna fill that. Let's come back to the side, I'm gonna E to extrude it, press escape so it's extruded straight there. I'm gonna press S to scale it, go to somewhere about there, extrude it up again. So I've got that brazier. But this time, actually, G and Z a little bit further down, I'm going to scale that out. So it's a little bit more of an interesting shape. That would be more fun. Now I can go back into edge mode. Alt select that and bevel that again. And face mode. I to inset that by 0 0.8. I'm going to extrude it down, but this time it's going to cause a problem because it's going to go through the other side. That's not a problem. Let's go down to there. And then we're going to have to scale that so that it goes inside. In fact, I should probably be seeing that in X-ray mode just to make sure that that's OK. So S, scale that in. So we're not going to have any problems there. And then again, Control and B to bevel that. 
Okay, a little bit more interesting. Let's just check that looks fine. Yeah, that looks pretty good and uniform. G and Z to bring that down a little bit. So let's get this interesting brazier shape. So this is where I see people go, what I would say is wrong. Uh, that, again, that's just being less efficient. But what people often try to do is they make this shape of this arrow pattern, then try to flex it into this shape in some way. I mean, that's just really tedious. If you know what you're doing with Booleans, you can do it in a much simpler way. So I'm just going to shift A, bring in a cube, scale that up so it's decent size. G and Z, again, scale it some more. Let's bring it to about there. So we're getting all of the bottom of the brazier in. And then I'm going to bring in another cube. G and Z to bring it up. Scale it a little bit more. Thinking somewhere about there. I'm probably going to have to play with this a bit. Actually, that's probably going to need to be a little bit smaller. S and Z to scale it on the Z axis and bring it up. Thinking about there. Shift Z to go into X ray mode. Vertex mode. Select those. So I've selected all four of the vertices on the top. Go into Edge mode. I'm going to press E to extrude them again. Escape. And then I'm going to scale it just on the X axis. So S and then X. And then I'm going to scale that out. I'm going to press E to extrude again and bring those up something like that. Then I just want to select those two vertices. M to merge at the center and those two. Shift click the second one. M at center there. And I've got this pointed arrow. Back into object mode. And I need to S and scale that on the Y axis. So it comes out of both sides. So we've got something that looks like this. Now I want to duplicate this. So Shift and D, R to rotate. Annoyingly, screencast keys don't seem to show second operations when you're doing it inside it. So I'm now rotating. And I want to press Z to do it exactly on the Z axis. And I'm just going to type in 90. So that's perfectly at a right angle to it. Then we want a second set. In fact, these might need to be made a little bit thicker. Hmm. Let's make the second set and then I can make a decision. So Shift and D again to duplicate, R and Z, and this time just 45. So we've got it at this angle. So that's going to be about there. Actually, no, that's probably about right. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go into vertex mode, select those vertices and G and Z to bring them down. So we've got this little variation in height that's going to make this a little bit more interesting. Back into object mode, Shift and D, R and Z to be on the Z axis, and then we're going to rotate this 90 as well. So we've got this shape here, and now the order of operations here is quite important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that, 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 and that, and then I'm going to Boolean these four objects to my larger cube at the bottom. So I'm going to shift click that, and then I'm going to use ball tools. Now you're going to need ball tools for the second part of this. So even yes, normally you could just do add modifier and boolean things together, but you're going to want it for the second bit. So edit preferences and you're going to come up here to add ons, type in ball and make sure you've got ball tools ticked on and then save preferences. So with that, I've got my four objects selected. The cube is my active object. That's why it's a different color. Yours will probably be just a slightly more yellow orange color. I've set mine to be green. So it makes things like this clearer for me. And then I'm just going to press control and plus on my number pad. And what that's going to do is that's going to have connected all these together. We can see here all of the booleans that are over here. We don't actually need to apply those. It will work fine. I'm going to hide that, hide that hide that and hide that. So now I've got this one object here with all of these arrows and this base bit. And now this is the bit where this makes it much easier. I'm just going to click that, shift click my main brazier body, and then I'm going to go to objects, ball tools, and we're going to do an intersection. Now what an intersection does is it only keeps the geometry that is shared between both objects. So essentially anything where there is an overlap. And if I click that, you'll see straight away what that does is that's kept each of the arrows, the base bit and where that is being combined with our brazier shape. And I think you'll agree that is a very simple way to make a quite interesting and nice shape. Now I do want to put something that's gonna make this more rigid. And normally on braziers, you have something in the middle here, sort of connecting this all together, so a loop. So Shift A to bring in a new mesh. I'm gonna bring in a cylinder. G and Z that up to about there's probably fine. Scale it up. I'm going to press Shift and Z. 
so it's not shifting on the Z axis. Bring that to about there. I need to get rid of this center portion. So I'm just gonna to go to face mode, select that face there, select that face there, come to top view. I to inset that, let's go to about there, and I'm gonna delete the faces. So that's gonna delete that top face and the bottom face because both are still selected. And then I'm gonna go into edge mode, Alt click that edge, then shift and alt the bottom edge, and then I'm going to edge, and we want to bridge edge loops. So that's going to solidify that and make it a manifold object. Finally, we just want to make it follow the shape of the rest of the object. So I'm going to go into vertex mode, shift and Z, and select all of the vertices on the bottom row, and then I'm going to just press S and bring that in slightly so it matches the angle of the outside of the brazier. Object mode. Happy with that for something that's nice and simple. And then finally, let's bring in some rivets. As we want them here, let's shift an S. I want the cursor to the active one, or the, sorry, the cursor to the selected. Either one would be fine. So we've got the cursor up here. And then shift an A. I'm going to bring in a mesh and I want a quad sphere. Quad spheres are generally better for hard surface modeling because they are made entirely of quads. It causes less problems, especially when you're Boolean things together. I'm going to scale that down to about the right size for a rivet, something about there. And then I'm just going to use a radial array to bring that out to the right sort of place. Now I'm going to use hard ops for this. If you don't have hard ops, you can do it the more traditional way using modifiers. If you want to know how to do that, go into the description. There is a video on how to use a radial arrays, both using hard ops and without, just so you can make your choice. But I'm going to press Q, mesh tools, radial array. And I'm going to bring that out to the point where it looks good. And usefully, this is already on eight. You can see that down here, just below where the mouse is. If you had it more, so nine, you're just going to bring that down to eight. And then get to that to the point by moving the mouse left or right to where it looks like the join is about correct. In fact, I think that needs to be a little bit further out. So I'm going to come here to the top of my modifiers and increase the strength slightly to about there that looks about right and if i wanted to i could duplicate this so shift and d to duplicate it escape to keep it in the same place and now importantly i'm not going to be able to move this if i press g and z this is going to go all manner of wrong what i'm going to have to do is go into vertex mode select all the vertices g and z move it down to where i want it so let's say this bottom part go off of object mode and then everything will be there and then I can fiddle around with the strength again to get this into the place where I want it. So something like that. Let's have a look, does that look good? Yeah, that looks fine. So here we've got our brazier. I think actually those two could do with scaling up slightly. I think you'll agree that would look pretty at home on some sort of chaos altar. And it's just these little subtle hints, like these stereotypical chaos spikes, and notice that there's eight of them, that just makes these objects a little bit more interesting. And it's those little Easter eggs that gets people where they know what you've done, really interested in your model, and it gives you something unique to show off. So, and actually let's select that and control and plus to Boolean those together, hide that, and then we'll apply that. And all I'm gonna do is come to here, shift and S, and let's move the cursor to selected, and then let's select one, two, three, four, five, shift and D, escape, and then again, shift and S, and then I'm gonna selection to cursor, but keep the offset, G and Z to move that back up. And I think that actually needs scaling down, shift and Z, not on the Z axis to make it a little bit skinnier. So there we go, two braziers made relatively quickly, all we need to do is just boolean these together and then we're good to go. As always, I hope you found that interesting. Would you have done this the same way? Would you have used those boolean operations to make this nice and quick? Or do you have a different way that might be even more quick and efficient than this? Please do add some comments in the comment section. Always happy to hear your ideas and always happy to learn something new. That is one of the major reasons I started this YouTube channel. One, I find it really helps me learn new things when I'm trying to teach other people and it cements it in my memory, but also it's quite interesting to hear what other people have to say about the way they do things and why they do it in different ways. 